Okay, so today I'm going to go over some things for our essay. I'm going to put this in Edpuzzle and you're going to take a quiz over it so that um, you can have a refresher for while I was out because tomorrow you're going to do a timed write. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk to you about is your hook. You know that your hook is the first two to three sentences in your essay and the purpose is to capture your reader's attention on your topic. It's just essentially an introduction to your topic, right? Get your informs your reader what you're going to be writing about in an engaging way. And so things that you can use for your hook are going to be facts, right? Personal anecdotes, which is a personal story, right? Experience, your personal story or experience. Again, this is short. It's two to three sentences, and I would probably lean closer to doing two. You can um, include like relevant or important quotes if you want to do that. That doesn't necessarily introduce your topic, but whatever. Um, uh, don't use the quote from the prompt, right? They want to see what you can come up with on your own, not what you can steal from a sheet of paper. Statistics, right? Or imagery. And imagery is just painting a picture, creating this um, touch, sight, feel um, experience for your reader um, that has to do with your topic, right? It's kind of like, imagine, blah, 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 blah. But I hate the, don't start off with imagine. Um, another thing you can do is a rhetorical question. I don't love using this rhetorical question because I think starting your essay off with a question is very fourth grade. But if you can make sure that it's a rhetorical one, then you'll be on a good path. Several of you um, did this on your essay this last week and it turned out really great. Um, it's just not my favorite type of hook. Um, I will say that I was impressed. Typically hooks are the weakest part of my essays in the beginning and I was impressed with y'all's because they were really good. The next thing I want to talk to you about is deconstructing a prompt. So a star prompt is going to look like this. You'll have a quote box, a think about statement, a write an essay, and then bullet points for how you will be graded. Can I move this? No. Bullet points for how you will be graded. And so a lot of you um, were writing on your essay about this. And a lot of you were writing about this in this recent essay, right? Or let's just say this one is about maturity, this one is about forgiveness, and this is about um, choosing empathy versus um, revenge, right? That's a good prompt. If you write a whole essay on maturity, then you've written off prompt. If you've written a whole essay about forgiveness, but you haven't connected it to this, then you've written off prompt. And if you write off prompt, your essay doesn't get scored. So you get a zero. When So you'll lose 16 points on your um, grade. And so what I like to teach kids to do is to completely ignore the quote. It's just to get your brain pumping. And you guys are in honors class. You don't need a quote to get your brain pumping about a topic. right? And if you write about maturity and don't connect it to these, then you have written a prompt. Um, the think about statement, right? I always tell kids to mark it out, right? It's not always this far off, like right? maturity and forgiveness, empathy and revenge, but a lot of times it, it really is far off. And so the best thing for you to do is to mark those out in this and just focus on these two, right? Empathy versus revenge. And then this is the rubric for how you're going to be scored. So I like to use it as a checklist. After you've written your essay, you go back and say, do I have a strong thesis? An example, do I have sentence control, and does my do my ideas progress? So write an essay. I like to do a T-chart and make a list to pick a side because many of us are trying to get fours, right? Your star essay is scored on a one, a zero, one, two, three, four scale, and four being the highest. Many of us are trying to get fours. Um, one way that you can do that is to write about the hardest side of the essay, right? 
Empathy is easier to write about, but if you can write a really persuasive argument for revenge, then uh, it's a unique perspective and you might be able to get a four. But you don't have to write on the hard side to do that. Another thing that you could do is just use a really unique example. Okay. The next thing I want to talk to you about are these words. These are no-nos. Do not use these, these words in your essay, okay? Duh, you think? This is your paper. I don't need you to say it. This is an academic essay, so I is not, first person is not acceptable unless you're using an anecdote as your example or your hook. That's the ex exception, okay? So I think, I believe, in my opinion, I am writing this paper about, right? Another thing I hate is when students say, we as people, we as humans, we as women, we as men, whatever we are in your mind, right? When you put that in your essay, I understand that you're trying to have like a really academic and scholarly and sophisticated voice but what you're doing is sounding stupid. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But what you're doing is um, saying something that's silly, right? What else are we? What are you going to say? We as monkeys? We as dogs? Like, this is waste of space, so don't say that. Okay? Word choice is really important. Specifically, um, if we're going to sit here on word choice for a second, I want to talk about um, word choice that is persuasive, right? Persuasive word, cho word choice, things that are persuasive words, more obviously, right? Those really boost the persuasive quality of your paper, right? Like certainly, without a doubt, clearly, things like this right? Should, obviously, certainly, without a doubt, clearly, undoubtedly, right? There's a ton of them. Um, so these are words that you should definitely be including in your paper because it makes sure that you are writing to your, your writing purpose, which your writing purpose is to write a persuasive essay, okay? So another way that you can um, write to your writing purpose and not lose those points for that section is by maintaining um, a persuasive structure and persuasive elements. You know the structure that we use is an Oreo structure. And so your first paragraph is going to be your opinion. Your body paragraph is going to be your reason and example. And your third body paragraph is going to be your opinion restated, but in new words. And this time you'll include a call to, act, call to action. Right? We talked about concessions and refutations, and all of you did a pretty good job of including them. But I just wanted to talk to you about their placement. Right? So there's um, four different options for where the concession and refutation can go. Right? Like the call to action, it's super important. It tells your reader what to do. That's, I've convinced you, now go do what I've convinced you about in my thesis. It always goes in your, as your last sentence. Always is your last sentence. But your concession and reputation can really move around, but I want to show you where it can go. Right? So it can either go in the, at the last sentence of your body, the last two sentences of your body paragraph. Right? So you'd have reason, example, concession, refutation. So it's sort of like how your paragraph here starts and ends with your opinion. Your body paragraph here starts and ends with your reason. But your reason is just your refutation. Right? You're just restating your reason and you're using it to prove the opposite side of your argument wrong. You can also... 
use your um, start use your concession and refutation as the start of your body paragraph right you can say here's my opinion this is what other people are saying this is why they're wrong here's an example to prove it and here's my opinion okay or you can put it in your with your thesis you can say here's my hook here's what people are saying about this here's why they're wrong reason example opinion in the same way that you can put it in your introduction you could also put it in your let's say down here for opinion reason example opinion right you could also put it here as your concession you refutate then you're gonna oops you'll do your concession and your refutation and then your call to action I think that's a lot which your refutation would just be your thesis restated here I think that's a lot to put here but you could do it one thing I want to make sure that you um, do with your um, concession concessions always use the word because to explain why people believe this because and then your refutation also always uses the word because people believe this and here's why it really just makes your argument stronger rather than just saying people believe this now believe me you have to make people get on your side and the way you get people on your side is by telling them the because the next thing I want to talk to you about is examples this was clearly and not easily the weakest part of our essays right so you give me a reason something is true and then you give me an example the example needs to be specific and clear and detailed and most importantly it needs to connect or prove your reason okay it needs to connect and prove your reason so <clears throat> One thing you can do is use something from a book, like, oops, there's only one or two O's in book. You can um, use something from a book. Somebody, uh, I think Adam, wrote about um, Harry Potter and used, like, Harry Potter showing Dobby empathy when, he could have, when, Harry, when Dobby was stealing from him and all this stuff. And after he showed him empathy, he was then able to blah, 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 blah whatever proved his reason, right? His reason was that you form relationships, which did happen between Harry Potter and Dobby, if you know the book. You can use TV shows, movies, history, celebrities, personal experience, all sorts of things, right? Sports, athletes, Right? Anything like this should to prove why your reason is correct. And this should be four to six sentences. It should be really detailed. It shouldn't just be explanation. Right? It should be a specific example because you can't expect people to just follow your reasoning and think that you are credible. Your job is to convince them and not every, like if you're like a teacher, your job is to teach, but to convince them through your lesson. And so to make sure that they're convinced, they have to fully understand your reasoning. And people you like, you know how I was telling you the example of Harry Potter as a book and how you could use it to support a reason. I gave you an example. I gave you an example to um, explain what I meant. And then hopefully you all were able to understand better. That's the purpose of your example in your essay. Right. You've given me your reason and you've clarified that by providing an example that that everyone can understand. That's the, the point of that. And so when you write your essay tomorrow, when you write your new essay tomorrow, which we're only spending one day on, so don't stress, but when you write your uh, essay tomorrow, I expect a really strong four to six sentence um, example 
but I want to make sure that you know that it connects back to your reason. It doesn't support something random. And that it ties back, right? That's important, that it ties back to your reason. That's super important. Okay? Thank you, guys.